The use of frequency in the United States and in many other countries is heavily regulated by the government. If I want to send a wireless signal at a particular frequency, in many, many, many cases, I need a license from the government to do that. Now that makes sense because, for example, when you turn on your TV and you turn tuned to a particular channel, or maybe you used to, you want to get the channel that you expect. You don't want me to be able to set up a TV transmitter at my house and drown out channel 2, which is being sent from a mile away, with my channel 2 that just has stupid cat videos all day long. So, so the ability to transmit signals through the air at various frequencies is something that in most cases you need some sort of license or permission to do. Now, at the same time, what's very fascinating is that these low power wireless transmitters like Wi-Fi, uh, chipsets, Bluetooth devices, um, Lots of these devices that we use on a daily basis that provide the wireless internet to us, um, they actually ended up in this weird place in the, spect in the spectrum chart uh, that, w that wasn't really ever designed for them. So the place that they inhabit is something called the ISM bands. So the ISM band stands for Industrial, Scientific, and Medical. And the Industrial, Scientific, and Medical portion of the spectrum was set aside for uh, actually for things like microwave ovens, for example, various other types of industrial, scientific, and medical equipment that would produce electromagnetic radiation, but wasn't necessarily designed for communication. And yet, that's where large amounts of communication, in particular, large amounts of wireless communication that we use to access the internet, takes place. So one of my favorite charts of all time uh, is this uh, a chart put out by the United States. This shows the US frequency allocations going all the way from like very, 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 very low frequencies to very, 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 very high frequencies down on the right. You can actually get like a printed wall version of this chart. It's really interesting. So um, one of the first things that you can take away from this, just zooming out and blurring your eyes a little bit, is that it's super chaotic. There's all sorts of little pieces of spectrum that have been reserved for all sorts of uses. Look at this key. It's got like 30 different colors on it. So this is really complicated. The way that we've carved up and divided spectrum is quite complex. So now let's start looking at some of the big chunks. So what is this thing right here? This is clearly a big chunk of spectrum that's being used for something. And if I zoom in a little bit, and you're probably still not going to be able to read this, what I can notice is this is for AM radio. This is broadcasting, AM radio. So those scratchy signals that you hear sometimes if you turn into certain stations in the car, like this, all those radio stations, are allocated this spectrum, and of course the stations have to get individual licenses to operate within that spectrum. Uh, what's interesting is that if I zoom down here, this little chunk is FM radio. So kind of interesting that FM radio has a smaller uh, proportion of the frequency spectrum allocated to it potentially, uh, but results in much, much clearer and much more enjoyable signals, which is kind of interesting. Um, okay, so. Let's zoom out a little bit, and, and if you look at this, you can find, notice that a lot of the big chunks of spectrum are for various types of broadcasting that you're familiar with. So television broadcasting, FM radio, uh, there's a couple of other pieces of television that get split up into a couple different chunks throughout here. Um, but there are things on here that you might recognize. But let's try to find the ISM bands. I mean, this is really important communication, right? All those Wi-Fi signals you exchange with access points. There must be like some big chunk of this that I can find where all that exciting and interesting communication takes place. Um, so the ISM bands that you might be familiar with, 2.4 gigahertz is where a lot of Wi-Fi devices operate. Uh, some of the newer ones have started to operate in the 5 gigahertz ISM bands. So let's look, try, try to find the 2.4 gigahertz ISM bands. That must be pretty, pretty easy, right? There must be some big chunk of spectrum here. Um, OK, so let's see here. Um, so this is the 300 megahertz to 2.4 gigahertz area right here. And I'm going to start zooming in a little bit. Um, OK, so 2.4 would be down here. Um, and there it is. Can you see it? Probably not. Um, it's this little thing right here. It's this tiny, tiny little sliver. And if I zoomed out and showed you the whole chart, you would never even be able to see this. It's this tiny, tiny little piece of spectrum. But yet, this is where all of this really exciting and interesting stuff goes on. And it turns out that it's a total accident of history that these devices operate in here at all. The reason they do is that you don't need a license to operate in the ISM bands. 
If I want to operate in these other bands, like if I want to interfere with TV signals, I've got to get a license to do that. But if I want to run in the ISM band, no problem. And so this tiny, tiny little bit of what was probably at some point considered very insignificant spectrum has you know, blossomed into this huge well of innovation and uh, communication, and there's so much stuff going on in here. Now, over time, we're going to have to revisit the policies that have led to this particular allocation uh, approach. You know, it's just not going to be feasible for us to move forward. Remember the Shannon capacity theorem. Bandwidth, the amount of information I can send is linear in the amount of bandwidth. So I've got to get more, we've got to get more of this for the internet, right? right? We need a, like a bigger chunk in here that I can use for my Wi-Fi device to connect to the internet. That's going to give me more bandwidth and it's going to allow me to download data faster. But for now, for historical reasons, we've got these tiny little slivers here and there uh, that are unlicensed and that's where all or most of the interesting internet communications with wireless devices take place.